The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, this ninth day of September. And uh, my pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, and that is on market days. This is a very interesting week. One of the most important weeks if certain things happen. You can't just keep saying it's one of the most important weeks every single week because it is an important week. But it'll be a really important week for two reasons. <clears throat> one is, if there's a break to the upside by the end of the week that takes the Dow somewhere into the 17,280, 17,320 area, I would have to consider that, that was a very big positive and that certain things could happen in the weekly charts because of it. If the Dow closes down 200 points, if it closes under 16,930, I'd probably say between 16,920 to 16,870, that implies that there's a really good chance that we've at least made a short-term top, a top of some consequence some consequence because it would impact the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence of the weekly charts in a negative fashion. So um, that is when it's going to be really important. 200 points uh, makes a difference. So what I'm looking at right now, let me just run the numbers because there's a chunk that I need to do. And let me just tell you this. I'm going to do it right throughout the show. Why? Because within the techniques that I discussed, you've just seen so many of them here, just especially the last couple of weeks, especially the last couple of months, actually. Look at this. I've got, I've got a webinar coming up. It's a live webinar. It's coming up this Friday. It's an all-day webinar. It goes from 9 in the morning until 5 in the evening, um, we'll be going through my CD, introducing the Shaffer Wave methodology in great detail. We'll be going through all the different, we're going, go through the charts live. We'll go through the charts so that you can actually understand what I'm doing because you get a month free of my uh, opening call. And you'll see why we've got long positions and why we've got short positions. You'll see the, re you'll understand the reasoning. And you'll also understand why I felt it important at this particular time to be very selective, both on the long side and the short side. Not that we aren't always selective, but more so because I wanted to expose us to either the very best on the upside or the potential for very low price stocks or stocks, it might be stock or stocks, that show the potential seasonally to move higher. So I'm trying to go under the radar to say, mm -mm, this is not the time to be uh, to show any bravado. This is the time to be very rational. Use the Chapman Wave methodology as clearly as you can. I just um, I, I can show a bunch of things. I'll try to do it right through the show. But please go to the front page of, of TFNN. Check it out, Master Trader Series class with Basil Chapman. It says, learn every aspect of the Chapman Wave in this eight-hour online Master Trader Series. When, when I, I say every aspect, it means every aspect that I'm going to show you, we're going to do so thoroughly and you're going to practice it, and I want you to send me charts over the next uh, many weeks to show me what you're doing. I want you to be able to look at this and say, within the context of the Chapman Wave methodology, I'm also going to show you, let me get rid of this now, let me going to show you something very important. I'm going to show you how identifying the lowest low bar, in this case on the 8th of August at 1890.25, look at the low bar that formed, and all you need to do is count each successively higher peak until you get to D. When you get to a D, why is that an E there when it should be a D? Um, huh, that's interesting. That should be a D. I think I made a mistake here. Um, that is not a high. Yes. So in this particular case, it took you to the D. 
And the S&P, let me show you the SP, S&P cash. So the futures are at this particular point down only five. They were down much more before. At 1995, the S&P itself is down 485, having made peak D. That's your requisite. That's what you want. That's where you want to see the MACD fast-moving average move sharply higher and then start its turn to the downside. That's where you want the stochastic to remain above 80%. It's at 82%. There, there are a whole bunch of things. This is where you want to introduce yourself to how strongly the the weekly chart is holding up or not when you're in a buy mode in the shorter term, especially if you're in a buy mode in the, in the intermediate term, like the, the weekly. These are all very important things. When you look at the monthly chart in leg D, it says you have made slightly higher highs for months now, and, and those slightly higher highs have it has taken it from peak C at 1687.18 the week of no in May of 2013 all the way to September this is all leg D at some point you are going to have a pretty sharp pullback but you've got to find that information in your shorter term um, um, charts and we're going to be going through that as thoroughly as I can um, so please is there still time Check it out. You get my, my, my service. Uh, you get a month for free. There, there are a whole bunch of things that I'm going to be helping you with. Um, I, this is so important. Why? Because the weekly charts are going to give us information by Friday at 4 o'clock. We want to be there. We want to be there during the day to be looking at this. We want to be able to say, these are the chart formations in the Chapman Wave that you'll be able to look forward to uh, 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 analyzing over the coming weeks. Why? Because certain things have happened, and therefore it implies that that's the chart pattern that you want. Let's see a couple of uh, questions in the den. Um, B-A-L, uh, let me just see. Uh, Z says, Dennis, as a student who paid for Basil's teaching services starting years ago, I highly recommend Basil's all-day teaching webinar. Thank you, Z. I, I, that is much appreciated, especially coming from you. And um, l let me also say uh, something else about this particular webinar. This is going to be a webinar that... It isn't as Im it is important, of course, to know the notation of the Chapman wave, but it's way more important to know how to use these moving averages, how to use the the, the inside wedge, how to use the um, channel lines. Look at this, the S and P. Look how oh, I love this. Look at this. Look at the ch the. the resistance line, what I call the inside track, you know, within an up channel, you get an inside track and it says right in there is where the price almost always pulls back from a peak. And it pulls back sharply and it goes towards the green line. Well, we're in that area right now in a G slash A in the uh, in the waveform. This is going to be a very important uh, two weeks coming up. Because if there is a sharp pullback, and at any point the S&P breaks 1978 key support, we're looking at something else. We're looking at the monthly chart giving a, a signal for the very first time. In fact, if we hold above this, if we're trading the 2018 to 2022 area in the S&P, it's going to mean another thing altogether. The Dow right now is down 51 at 17,060. The S&P is down 470 at 1996. The composite index is down 11. Isn't this interesting? All this talk, I don't even know what's going on with Apple. I've just been so busy with all these different charts. Apple is trading up $1.13. Woohoo! at 99.50, but it's way off the last peak at 103.74. This is going to be really important because the weekly chart is a potential for a peak F right here if certain things are, are, are established. If, if Apple starts to break under 97, it's only two and a half points away, that's going to imply the weekly chart is in real trouble. Uh, no, real trouble because it's had a fantastic move. It's going to be for the first time that the nine-period exponential moving average has been pierced, that big, thick black line over there. That means, that means a lot. It means also that if, in fact, there's a new recovery high, four points higher above 10374, that's very positive and it extends the buy mode in all time frames. So, uh, you know, th that's the way we're going to be looking at it. What are we looking at in terms of the um, gold GCZ14? Well, gold is trying to rally. It's up about $2 right now. Let me see what the current, uh, yeah, it's up about 2 it's about 12.56. Most importantly, 
It's under the nine period moving average of 1268. You remember chart patterns to me are really important. And I, I spent a lot of time um, last week and the week before discussing the fact that in my work, this H pattern that then goes to this lowercase lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m can go on for a long time and if certain levels are taken out on the downside in this case if the gld the gold spider uh, trust closes under 119.62 the low of the week of the 30th of may that implies you've got to be ready for the 117 to 114 area being tested that 114 area test has been tested twice well, once it was hit, twice, second time it was tested. It was tested over a three-week period, 114.50, 114.68 on the 28th, the week of the 28th of June was the low. It was tested uh, once, and then it was tested again back on the 114.46, back in the week of the 3rd of January. Then it had that big rally, uh, kind of a big rally, but it couldn't take out the, the previous high of 137. Instead, it stopped under the 200-period moving average. I'm going to teach you about these patterns that repeat over and over and over and over they are really important how did i know a year ago that there was a chance that you can go from a lowercase h to a lowercase m and then a continuous pattern i didn't i drew it in because historically that's what you've seen many times in this particular fractal and that's what i was expecting do i expect that in fact we're going to take out 132 in the next uh, six weeks i don't think so um not unless we, we, we hold steadily for the next two weeks at least without taking out 119. And that's going to be really important support. That means I've got to look at the dollar, DXY. Look at the dollar. Look at that. Leg C testing uh, at 100, uh, I'm sorry, not 100, at 84.52 in the cup formation. With a successful, let me show you this. This is a pattern that I developed a couple of years ago. I noticed that it, it's called my Sears Holdings, not Sears and Roebuck. doesn't go back that far. It's the Sears Holding retest of the H pattern that is successful. It gives you a brand new buy signal to buy mode. That says once it took out the high of the dollar took out 81.48, the high of the week of the 8th of November, it said, ha, be careful. This can go to a C or even a D when it's in leg C. It has not taken out the high of uh, 84.75. Let me double check that. 80. 84.75, but that's, that should be where it's trying to go. It's going to 84.52. I think it will be able to get there, and uh, that'll make the cup formation a second cup formation, but one that has the power to move higher into the 85 to 86 area. So we're going to be watching this really closely. Uh, bonds, TLT. Uh, TLT has made, oh, this is so interesting. The TLT is trying to rally today, but we've been looking at, well, oh, we've got a break coming up. I've got a break coming up. It's very important. We're going to get some commercials. We'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians, our Dow's down 53, SP's down 5. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Call free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back. So there are a couple of questions here. First of all, Lane Christian Company, Global Water Management, Construction Drilling, Small um, small Cap Company. I, I think I found this. I don't think I was asked about it, but I did quite a lot of work on it because I thought this is the only global water company that I've come across in, a, in recent times that hasn't had a spectacular move to the upside. At least that's my thinking here. In fact, it's gone from the 38 round number high last made in, in 2011 down to its price right of 1068 right now. It even went low. It went under 1020 just the other, about a couple of weeks ago. Um, most importantly, uh, historically, it's been up in the uh, 58 area. And I did a um, uh, Fibonacci extension to the downside, which said that if it took out 10.79, um, 9.62 would be the arch formation retest, and that's going to be really important. So I, I'm, I don't like it here. I don't even understand why it is acting so poorly. Um, as I say, I just... I could be wrong. I don't even remember offhand most of the other water companies. But... Um, Ah, oh, there it is, Gringo. 7.04 a.m., Lane Christensen misses by 14 cents, misses on revs, backlog rose. See, this is the interesting thing. So backlog rose to 8%. Are they not meeting the backlog? Is there a problem there? Uh, there's a problem with this company. That's all I can say. They've just had lousy, a lousy chart pattern. I would give it a little time. I'd probably even say I'd give it a quarter to actually turn the, to turn the corner because this is one I would want the fundamentals 
skills to improve. I, I, I wouldn't tra trade it just on a technical basis. They could go insolvent from the way it's looking right now, even with the backlog. Oh, backlog might be with all the rain. They just got that water hitting the back door. They got a huge backlog there. Um, so what I'm looking at here is I, I, do, I don't think I'd play this. I'd wait a day or two. Now, if it refuses to go under today's low of 1054, but instead it holds very nicely in the 1070s, and then by Friday or Monday, it, it's, it's trying to pull back, but it keeps trying to bounce back because the selling today was, in fact, misplaced. That's what the chart would say if it holds and it doesn't take out the low. Then I'd say, you know what, just as a speculative stock, I treat it only as a trade. Why? Because if it's successful in holding here, it could have a bounce to the 11.40 level, which is the um, the 200, the 9p moving average in the weekly chart. But that's not important. It's holding that level and then trying to get to today's opening price, which is 11.52. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't. Wait, 11.52. Yeah, 11.52 right now. It's at 10.66. You want to see how it can get there. If it's able to get into the wick of today's candle, that would be really important because at some point today, somebody thought things were okay. So all I'm saying is this is not a good chart pattern. I don't understand it. It should be doing much better. It's a water company after all, global water company. Uh, I just I don't understand it. And as such, I, my best, I'm going to say, I personally would stay away from it right now, L-A-Y-N, trading at 10.66, down 93 cents. But as a trade, if it holds well and the 120-minute chart is able to get above 11.17, no. If it's even able to rally and holds, it's going to hold for two days or more without taking out whatever it rallies to, it must not take out today's low of 10.54. And then if you want to have a quick trade, I say, you know what, you can have a quick trade and I would just raise the stop on that small position, treat it as, as a bounce only, and then if it starts to hold, because this is all misplaced, the announcement today was not read correctly or whatever, then I'd start looking at it. Why? Because if it closes on Friday anywhere in the 11.25 area, that suddenly turns the chart from being, being terrible to being potentially quite positive because it gives that wick a chance to be tested all the way to 11.99. But on, on a fundamental technical level that I'm looking at it right now, I, uh, it's a horrible, horrible chart. But as a trade, maybe they turn in the corner. Maybe this is the bad news it needed. It's got huge volume, but not as big as the volume that was down um, on the down day of the 23rd of July, where volume was 647,000. Six hundred, let's call it six hundred and forty-eight, uh, and way above anything we've had since. Even today, the, even yesterday, and oh, yesterday was four seventy-six on an up day. All right, I can't talk about the volume in this case. I can only talk about um, the price, and the price is don't take out today's low. So I hope that helps you. Um, so that's L A Y N Lane Christen, and I, I I do remember actually doing the work on this. I just don't remember if I read about it, it came across in the scan, or whether someone had asked me about it. So um, just a nibble. <laughs> so that's what I want to do. And then I was asked about. Uh, let's see, Basil, could you do T L T charts to keep bond prices up? The stock bonkers have to go down? Question mark. Hey. That's a really great question. I'm going to get to that question, and I want to talk about what's going on here internally and the Chapman Wave techniques and patterns that we're looking at. I'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customer 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So let's look at bonds. Uh, a couple of questions that I get to in the den, like uh, potash and moz, 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 moz is moz. Um, so bonds right now have held the uh, this is going to be very important because they've held the 50 period exponential moving average they're underneath the uh, 200 period now this is going to be also interesting in the sense that so this is the 32 right here so we've got the 32 we've got the 50 and we've got um way way down you've got the other moving averages okay so bonds this is what i'm looking at for bonds if i go to uh, I'm going to do that right now. Let me get out of this one, close this workspace, and I'll show you what I'm going to show you. I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at uh, right here. I'm going to look at the uh, triple yield chart, and this triple yield chart shows the 30-year. That's white. The uh, yeah, the goldy yellow color is 10-year um, note yield. 
and the uh, cyan one, this light blue one, trading at 1.755 or 1755, is the five-year T note. Look how nicely, look how well this is holding up. So the five-year is holding very well. It refuses to go down. It, it, it was the one that plummeted huge. It plummeted all the way down to 5.41. Right now, 5.41. Wow. Okay. So now it's a 17.55. And uh, what's really important about it is that you're honing in. You're getting closer and closer. The yields are starting to get closer and closer. Look at the look at the tenure. There's this downtrend line, which is going to try to break uh, at some point. So in the meantime, they're all trading where they have been many times before over the past few years. But the big difference is that this is the second weekly candle that's made a higher high after that low of G slash C at 30.59 in the 30-year. In the so when I look at this, I'm saying to myself, a bounce in the yield, but I don't see a sign yet of a major upturn. What I do see is the chance of a cluster, I'm circling it over here, a cluster formation. Let me just get to this over here. I want to be able to see that you can see. Uh, no, not here. It's going to be right there. Uh, click. There it is. Oh, good. Right there. Oh, man, this Tiger TV. Folks, if you haven't tried it, it is just I click one click. It's right there. And there it is. Can you see what I'm seeing? No, I need to move this over a little bit. There you go. Okay. So you, do you see my, my the, arrow, the pointer right now? Can you see the pointer? Yeah. So what we're looking at is this is clustering, and there's a chance that instead of having a big move up in bond yields at this point, this, this is what I'm thinking, the price is going to determine whether I'm right or wrong. It's 3.229. It's called a 32.29 in the yield right now, 30-year. If the 30-year rallies, it's going to have quite a lot of resistance at 30, 33.27. That's the high of the week of the 8th of um, August. If that occurs, you're watching the 10-year, uh, which is trading right now at uh, trading at 24.93, trying to get to 33, uh, 20. 6.14. So, and then the, what will be really important is that the five-year will finally make its leg D above the high of 20, oh, I keep looking at the wrong thing, the high of 18.07 that was made the week of the 1st of August. And if that happens and it goes to D, it doesn't usually go much higher than an E. A D or an E, and then it reverses. So I'm thinking cluster pattern here. My thinking initially was that bonds would pull back at any point, but they would start to rally if the general market started to not just fall, but to tank. Now, what do I mean by tank? If the bonds, I'm looking at the uh, continuous contract, which is trading at 137 and 26. Uh, 30 seconds. The December contract is trading at 124. So there's, uh, oh, there's a huge difference. 137 and 124. Oh, wrong one. TYZ. I keep doing that. 137. I thought they were about the same at exactly the same price. So here's what I'm thinking. If there's going to be an H formation, do you see that in this channel, now I'm going to be teaching this on Friday. I'm going to teach you how to just take any any points and how you can draw channel lines, how you can draw the inside track, which says that's the containment area. If it breaks above it, it needs to break and then push towards the upper channel level or if even if it's a rising wedge formation to the next inside track. Because if it doesn't do that, what will happen is it's going to fail and come back and retest the, the buy zone or the propellant zone. Then it will become a repellent zone if at any point bonds go under 128. So it's going to make it real easy for me. September's underway. Unless the high of last month, 140 and a half, is taken out. Let me just see in the, in the Z contract. So it's USZ14. I just want to see what it is. Yes, unless in the in the in the December contract, 140 and 16.30 seconds is taken out, 
this month, if it is taken out, that's going to say yields are going to continue dropping, and we have to treat the market and bond yields as something separate. But if, in fact, we start to see that – oh, let me just redefine that. If bonds go up and the market starts to decline – you will see that rotation that often takes place, that uh, historically takes place. It hasn't happened uh, all that much lately. Why? Because the Fed's been there helping out. But if, in fact, bonds go higher and the stock market, the Dow breaks 16,850, the S&P uh, breaks um, 1972, 1968, as bonds go higher, it means money is going back into the so-called safety of bonds as money comes out of the stock market. So let me make this as clear as possible. This is a very important level because the 120-minute chart of the continuous contract is trying to find a base. There isn't any real uh, at 18%. There isn't any v-shaped bottom to show that there's a big spike coming up in bonds short term. It just says, hey, it's flattening out near 20%. That's kind of good. But unless there's a nice spike that turns the stochastic up decisively holding in the 25 to 35 area as the MACD crosses positive and then the 200 period moving average of 138 and 20, 30 seconds gets pierced, bonds right now are telling me be a little bit careful. It doesn't look at this point as if they're going to crash, making yields much higher. And I'm suspicious. I'm thinking here, and what I mentioned to my subscribers for a little while, is that there is a chance that we could see, instead of bonds coming down and money going from the so-called safety of bonds into the new safety of stocks, helping the stock market, my, my impression right now is that there's a limited upside in the stock market, and we just might see stocks and bonds come down together. That, it, it, it happens periodically but for a shorter period. So we're going to be looking at this very closely. Why? The Dow is down 62, the S&P is 563. I was asked, I'm going to get back to bonds in a minute, but I was asked a question. And the question is, if, uh, well, the question is, Basil, if the ESU, that's the E-mini uh, S&P future December contract. Oh, he's got the uh, U contract. All right. Um, doesn't matter to me which it is. Uh, U's fine. No, I, I want to use the Z because we're going to be changing. Very, I'm looking at this intermediate term. So in the Z contract, the December contract, if it is indeed a top, what targets do you have for lower price? I'm going to make this as clear as I can as I have for weeks and weeks and weeks. I don't care about the ESU. I don't care about the ESZ. I don't care about the Dow. I don't care about the NYA. I don't care about the IYC, which has acted fantastically up until now with a peak C and an E's a D, but it hasn't got it. This is the uh, uh, Consumer Services ETF. I don't care about the NYA. Look how many in the Chapman Wave have all made Ds, a D for that. The NDX made a D, but the, the Qs have not yet made the D. They could still do it. They're holding very well. The NDX went to a D. I don't care about anything. I do care about two things. They are absolutely imperative in my work, and that's the volatility index. Look at this. The volatility index got repelled right at 1336 is the 200 period exponential moving average on the daily chart. 1335 was the high on the day, and it's pulled back. It's at the low of the day towards the low at 12.75. The MACD stochastic all said, hey, this is the breakout that you're looking for, mister. We're going to go to leg C about 1341. Couldn't do it. There is internal buying. So until you see the uh, VIX index going into the high 15s and holding, making higher lows and higher highs, and then pushing to the 16s, then the 17s, but then it won't go 16, 17. It'll go straight to 19 and 20 if it does that. Until it does it, you've got buying pressure. I'm going to say that again. Buying pressure, buying pressure, buying pressure. But it's not just that. You've got to have the VIX rallying. And in the background, that starts to come to the foreground. Oh, well, I'm going to be going through this in my webinar on Friday. This is, these are such important issues. You want to see bad news or good news or any news 
be repelled in the marketplace if you're a bull. But if the marketplace takes it and turns the market down on all the news as the volatility index rises, that is negative action. And we have not seen that for quite a while. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying my key components are one is a sentiment thing that is based on price and that's the VIX index, the volatility index. Monthly chart if I, uh, is not giving me anything. But the weekly chart, if on Friday at 4 o'clock the, the VIX is anywhere in the 14s or higher, it says be careful. We have started to make some kind of a top with D or maybe an E in the indexes, in the dailies. That's going to impact negatively the weeklies. We took a position in, 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 in one of the indexes on the, on the short side, start a position, haven't really got a big flourish about anything yet. We did take another one in one of the sectors, fairly tight stop. I mean, just uh, at this point, it's like a 1.20%, one, 1. Uh, percent, uh, one, one point, yeah, it's just, just over one point uh, a buy stop on the on the short position. I don't want to get heavily into the short side. Let me now go back to the TLT. The TLT is having a, a, an okay candle. The stochastic now is at 12%. It could flatten out. The MACD is widening, and that's not good. So what needs to happen is it could take a few days. But unless the volatile, unless the TLT at 115.66, down 12 cents, this is the iShares Lehman 20-year Treasury Bond Trust. Made an island reversal, but that's not a big deal because this, this thing makes it's, it trades overnight, so uh, 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 gaps are, are, are common. But, wow, if it's able, if, if, if it breaks the 115 support and starts to trade decisively in 114, just cannot get a rally going because it keeps making low lows, then I would have a target on this of 113.48 in the, in the monthly chart. And it says if 114 and a half is taken out, watch out because that makes bonds highly vulnerable to, to, to a decline because that big spike, that right arm extension in the weekly chart going to a G slash B, it's interesting because in the, uh, uh, it's an F slash B in the con uh, continuous contract. I'm going to rely on that more because F would say be careful. Stochastic's at 82%. That's good. So you can see what I'm looking at. I'm looking at another trading range which says, yeah, I could go to the 136 area. Maybe not yet down to the 135s which says, whoa, be careful because now you're getting to some real dangerous monthly territory. But I'm thinking that bonds are going to be the action in bonds going into this Friday into early next week on Tuesday or so is going to be really important because if it fails to hold support, it says watch the yields because you might not get that narrow trading range which I'm talking about because if, if it makes this reversal pattern of an arch formation and goes all the way back to 135 in the continuous contract, that makes the Z US US. Z14, um, it makes the low, this candle low of 134 and 30 US core at 135. It makes that 135 area really important, especially that 135 to 134 and 26, 30 seconds. That's the 200 period moving average. If instead it's able to bounce, even if it makes the H pattern, if it uses time to bounce towards 138 and a half, 139 and a quarter, somewhere around there in the bonds, that's going to use up time and that'll be important. So the levels to watch, Warren, quick question. On, on the bonds, the TLT, a close below 115 says be real careful because sliding to the 114s says you're open to that 113.48 nine period moving average in the monthly chart uh, uh, um, being tested. So uh, while we're looking at that, I want to do another thing, and this is before we go to a break. I want to look at, just to show you my Dow Quartet, I'll do it real quickly, GE. Lousy action. Not really bad yet, but really not lousy action in terms of what's going on in the general market. It's failed to do anything other than have a bounce to a peak D. It's kind of stalling. IBM. IBM is pulling back. Triple M was holding well, still holding quite well. Not great, but holding well. And UTX is not acting very well at all. My Dow Quartet is not acting too great. I'll be back. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. You've heard Basil Chapman on the air as the host of the Tiger Technician's Hour, and now's your chance to spend a full day learning his trading methodology, the Chapman Wave. Basil has taught thousands of students his trading methods over the years, and on Friday, September 12th, he'll be hosting a one-day online Master Trader Series class. Included is a month of his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $128 value. Basil will cover a variety of topics and techniques that he uses when looking at key charting patterns that repeat consistently in the market and that you can add to your trading methodology. You have access to the full eight-hour archive for a period of 30 days, as well as availability to ask questions of Basil in the month following the course as you practice what he teaches in this full-day Master Trader class. For all the details, visit TFNN.com and sign up for Basil Chapman's Master Trader class on Friday, September 12th. Reserve your seat today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Let me just go through a couple of things. We've got the last break coming up. We've got the options hour. It's just a great show. I really recommend you. Just all the shows on TFN. You know, there's just so much information. So let's just go. And don't forget, I'm going to do this one more time. Go to the front page. This is really the most perfect time for, for taking this Master Trader series. I, the information that I'm going to give and follow up on, I, I think, is timing-wise, couldn't be more perfect. Perfect, why? Because it'll explain what could happen if we go higher um, Friday 
at the close by the close on Friday, and it explains what happens if we start if we continue this uh, the, this mode that we're in right now with the Dow down 71, S and B down seven. Really important because it's looking out to the rest of September into October. So let me just go through this Berkshire Hathaway. Really important stock. Well, I have it in a C in the in the weekly chart, and I have it in an F in the monthly chart. Um, I don't know about that because there was there was some news that I, I could make a case that in fact it's a D in the weekly chart. I don't want to make it complicated. Let's keep it simple. It's an F slash C in the daily at 138.90 was the high um, yesterday. And what's really important about this is that within the context of uh, we've got a round number low so far of 137. I'm going to be watching this really closely because if Berkshire Hathaway, which was one of the clues for me that I cannot get sh uh, overly short, that I needed to get long just a few weeks ago, maybe a month and a half ago, was because it was acting so well. And if it was in, in, all, this diff in all the different spheres of Berkshire Hathaway, if it was acting well, I said insurance, uh, other things were also going to be doing well. So now it's starting a little bit of a turn down. Is this more serious? Is this peak E in the 120-minute uh, uh, chart that leads to the daily peak F, which leads to some kind of pullback to under 133.96, the nine-period moving average in the weekly? We don't know yet, but those are the symptoms. Those are the things that we look for, and we say, okay, Okay, now we know exactly what to look for. Those are the levels on the upside. A break into the 139.50 to the 140.30 area says, uh -uh, don't be too quick. It's extending higher. That's improving the weekly chart. So th that's the way I want to teach you what to look at on the upside, what to look for on the downside. Let me explain very simply the Chapman Wave Stalk Leg Formation. That's this oval pattern. Usually it's a D, sometimes it's an E, but usually it goes to a D, pulls back, and then it forms a containment area that basically looks like an oval. You can't even put a rectangle there. Oval looks much better because it makes the higher high to D and a slightly in the middle of lower low. But the low that was made today shouldn't happen. It should not take out uh, 17,009.07. What's the low today? 17,009.63. It's, it hasn't taken it out by uh, some 50 cents. That's really important in my work. It says, hey, the MACD hasn't crossed negative. Stochastic still at 86. There is a chance we could have another pop-up to the neck. So this is the – this is the. let me go here to this chart. So this is the, the, this is the, the leg. This is just a big leg to the upside in the stalk leg formation. This is the body, and we're expecting at some point a pop-up above 17,161 if it's going to turn out to be this pattern. Then you make the head, and the, 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 the neck and the head real quickly, and then the beak comes back down. It goes under 17,161. If it takes out the low of 17,009 or whatever the low is in this particular pattern, that's very negative and says watch for the next candle of importance on the left side because that's probably where you're going to go. So these are the patterns that we're looking at, and we've got it in so many charts. Look, you've got it in the um, uh, the QQQ series. So we're about to wrap up and go to the um, to the options uh, uh, to your options show. Think or swim. Let me just do this one more time. The QQQs didn't go to leg D, but there's still some strength. But no, no, no. The NDX 100, the root, did go to leg D. I'm watching this real closely. In fact, that has got more of an oval pattern. So I will be explaining these things. I'll go through some of it again tomorrow. Hey, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all tomorrow. And check out my webinar coming up. It should be a really important one. See you tomorrow. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term 
long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This is TFNN.